Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you are here. I am on vacation right now, but I am so thankful for you to stop in today during this premiere video live at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time on August the, what is it, the 13th, 14th? I don't know what day it is because I'm on vacation. <laughs> If you're watching this as the live premiere, do speak up in the chat because Robin, our administrator, will be in the chat. If I have internet, I will be here as well, but you can definitely chat with everybody else for the duration of my video today. If you're watching this as a replay, definitely leave me a comment below what you thought about today's session. And of course, if you have questions, feel free to ask questions during the live premiere and as a comment down below. Alrighty, so last week I decided to do some direct to paper mixed media using book pages, stencils, we use some acrylic paint, we use some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist, we also use some uh, Color Bursts by Ken Oliver. So here are a few of the pages that we made. I thought what I would do right off the bat is basically recap how we made those pages by making a one maybe i think one will be good that way you get the idea and you can go from there so i started with some book pages i generally like to pick up a new book not a really old book unless the old book has really good sturdy paper for my mixed media projects i I pick up whatever I can find at the dollar store, dollar tree is what we call it, dollar 25. And I do a by size. So I will look at the size of the book. Sometimes I'll even take a piece of paper with me or a ruler and I'll measure it. I want it to be at least bigger than eight and a half inches tall and at least wider than five and a half inches because I like to use a whole page sometimes. And it's nice if it's at least the size of your largest journal page that you like to make. I've got a couple of things. I've got a brayer. I've got some acrylic paint, just acrylic craft paint. Doesn't matter what brand it is. The better the band, brand, the smoother, the more opaqueness that it's going to have when you're done. Maybe a little bit cheaper. It's probably going to take a couple of coats. It may have a chalky feel to it. So don't feel like you have to have one particular brand over another. And I've got a soft rubber brayer. If you get a hard rubber brayer, it has a tendency to leave hard lines. Those are really better for using on like linoleum um, or when you're doing printing with a block because they can work together well. All right, so I have some Island Blue acrylic paint here. So I'm going to put a little bit on my page and I may need more than what I put down and it's okay to add more if you, as you need it. If you don't have a brayer, don't want to buy a brayer, you can use a gift card. Just scrape it across your page. I don't want to use that today because I want smoother uh, images of paint, meaning no big ridges. I do have too much paint, so I'm going to grab another paper, kind of roll that off. Maybe I'll just make two pages. So you can fuss with this as long as you like. If you want to have a more opaque, you may need to add more paint. I think mine looks pretty good. I am going to put a stencil pattern on top. So let's dry this and then we can put a stencil on top. It's dry enough that I'm not getting any transfer of paint, so I'm going to grab a stencil. I've got the June Artistic Stencil Club, so I'm going to grab one of those designs. Which one do I want? I think I'm going to do a couple of different ones, maybe. So I'm going to turn this sideways. All right, maybe I can do it like that. I don't know why I didn't think that way when I had it turned this way. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just got to think about it a little bit, okay? All right, so now what I want to do is I've got some acrylic paint. This one is uh, cobalt, and I've got my brayer still. So I'm going to put a little bit of paint. Usually I use a palette, and I didn't get one out. So I want to kind of just add a little bit.
And I'm just going to let it fade out. Let's see how that looks. That's kind of interesting, adding a little pattern. So I'm going to do it again over here. I'm going to get that lined up in the corner. Just again, adding a little bit of some patterns there. I'm going to put this in a tub of water that I have over here to the side. It has a little bit of thieves cleaner in it. That way, when I'm done with my session, I can just take those to the sink and rinse them off. All right, so let's grab a different stencil. I think I want this one. So we're going to put it across the bottom here. And this time I've got a amethyst metallic paint. Let's see how that looks. Just a whole different pattern effect. I'll rotate it this way. Maybe you can see the pattern. All right, let's do it one more time. I used a little bit too much paint, but I'm just going to clean my brayer off. All right, so I'll peel this one off. And then I'm going to put this in the water and let that dry. I mean, let these dry, let that get cleaned up. All right, I think those are kind of cool. So you kind of get the idea that, you know, you can just keep layering stencils back and forth. You can pick colors that you feel go well together. You can use this as a whole sheet or a partial sheet. So what I'm going to do next is clean off my work surface here and get ready to show you what we're going to make with some of these mixed media prints. I've cleaned off the desk a little bit and I've grabbed a couple of supplies and I've got the prints here. By the way, I did scan all of these in. Now, including these two, there are 52 images. I've already edited 30 of them by the time of recording of this video. If I'm lucky, I will get them all uploaded so that y'all could go see them today. I am going to make this two pages here that we did at the beginning of this video as a free digital download. Just go over to lindaisrael.com, create a user account on my website, and then you can go to the digital downloads following the link in the description box, and you'll be able to get this for free. All right, so let me set this aside. What I thought I would do is a small accordion folded journal that could maybe be more like a folio per se as a journal because you may just want to put some pockets in it to hold some supplies to pass along to a friend. Maybe not a true full-blown junk journal. Maybe you'll put some notepads in it or something. So I've got some oversized postcards and these measure six by 11 inches. And I have some large book pages here and I think they are nine inches by 12 and a half inches. They don't have to be this big. It's just that I wanted mine to be at least eight and a half inches tall because I like to work in that format. So what I'm going to do right now is trim down the postcards to be eight and a half inches tall. And I'll save that piece, make a tag or something out of it. How is everybody? I hope you are well. I hope that you're having a great week. I'll be back next Monday. At the time of this recording, I had not decided what I'm going to do. It depends on what I can get done in the next 24 hours. <laughs> so it may be a continuation of what we're working on today. I think that's what I'm going to do is make the base and then at the next uh, live stream, I will embellish the base. How's that sound? All right, so I'm going to trim these to be eight and a half inches tall. I think, I don't know, I'm going to, I'm going to trim four at least, maybe five. All right, so what I want to do is my pages are going to be basically six inches across. So I'm going to take my Fabri-Tac glue because this is shiny 
and sometimes Aline's tacky glue won't stick to it and I have just a little bit of this glue left so I'm hoping there's enough for today. And I'm just making a little zigzag down the edge here. I'm going to grab a book page and I'll come in just a little bit so you're not too close to the edge. Well, apparently I didn't get that cut as narrow, but that's okay. And then I'm going to slide it over and now I'll use my Aline's Tacky Glue and let's glue this one on here. All right, now before I go forward, I think what I want to do is I want to fold this. So I'm just kind of folding it just a little bit. I'm kind of pushing that book page out just a smidge like I don't know I don't even think that's an eighth of an inch there and then I want to go ahead and just kind of accordion fold this loosely so I'll just line it up as best I can with the edge and crease that over and go back the other way Oh, I didn't get it over far enough. All right, so I just want to see how big I want to make this. So a cover, a page, and the back cover. Do we just want the one? Because it's actually going to go like this, and it's going to be two-sided, which means when we go around this side, we'll have a page in the middle, right? Maybe I need to do one more. I'm gonna go ahead and line this one up as best I can, because it seems like I got a little crooked. Yeah, that would go here, like that. Yeah, so I can glue this to the cover. Oh wait, go this way. Go like this, and then like that. This is going to be covered. And then when we flip over, we have this, and then we have that. I think that's right. Or is that this? Okay, that's what I'm doing. All right, I was confusing my own self. All right, so I'm just going to glue this piece down. Get my... This one actually is rough on this side, so I'm going to use my leans. Get my bone folder. You can also use a gift card to smooth that out just a little bit. So then if I... Oh, that's still not right. Oh, well, it's going to work. I think it'll be fine just the way it is. All right, so what I'm going to do is put another piece of paper around the cover here so I'll start it on this side and I think what I'll do is just go a little bit past and then we'll cut this piece off oh well I couldn't get it so I tore it all right so this one isn't slick so I'm going to go ahead and put glue on these pieces. I'm going to cover the front cover. I'm using the Fabri-Tac glue because this one is a shiny postcard. I should go like here. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this all the way across. So I'll glue down the postcard. 
All right, so we're going to fold it back up again. May need some more glue. All right, so this will be a front cover and then flip it. And we've got a page and flip it. We've got a page and then we've got this last segment and then flip this over. That's our back cover. Now we flip it this way and it looks like it's the beginning again. We got a cover, we have a page, a page, and then the back. Okay, I think I like how this turned out. I wasn't sure how I wanted it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take these pages and cover these different pieces so that we could use this as a foundation. All right, I think what I wanna do is cut these. So I'll go ahead, find the straight edge here. And I find that if I am consistent when I cut them, that it kind of goes together as a puzzle piece. I know that sounds strange, but that's four inches. And then this piece would be almost five inches. So I'll just kind of cut a few of these that same size. It's the monotonous things, just sitting here cutting pieces of paper one after the other, just to have them already pre-cut and work from there. It can be mindless. You can just listen to some music or watch a television show while you cut paper. All right, so I'm going to start with this batch, if you will, and I'm really not going to pay attention to what is the actual cover and what is the back because I want to just cover up all of this. So let me find an edge. Here we go. So it's not super big. It almost fits in the whole picture here. So I'm going to lay this out flat and then cover papers all the way down one side. And since we're on paper to paper, it's not glossy. I'll just use a Ling's tacky glue. And I might kind of wrap this around to the back. So we got one down. Let's do a different piece all together. Maybe I'll do the same size. There we go. And if I put that over here and wrap that around, kind of gives us a nice little color block here. I'm just going to cut this piece off. I'm concentrating really hard here. I was thinking I might chitter chat with y'all like I do during the live streams. <laughs> but I thought, well, I could also make this video a little bit shorter if I don't talk as much. <laughs> okay, so we've got to start here. I kind of like that. You know what I could do every once in a while? is use a whole piece from top to bottom. I think I will. And that will give me a nice little variety. I'm going ahead to cut this straight so it's not jagged. Oh, and I'm going to cut it at eight and a half inches tall too. That way I don't have to cut it afterwards. Okay, yeah, I like this idea. What 
what I'll do when I'm done is I'll get my big paper cutter out and we'll trim this at once, I think. <laughs> I'm going to overlap it just a smidge. That's a technical term, you know, smidge. And I didn't quite get enough glue on this edge, so... The edges are a little rough, so I'm just going to trim them to both be the same size if I can get it under my paper cutter. I could put them bigger on top, smaller on the bottom. Let's put the smaller on the bottom. Okay. I like mixing up patterns just to kind of keep it interesting throughout. And we're going to put pockets and tuck spots on top of these papers. So I don't have to be super meticulous, but I do want them to have a pleasing effect as I put them down. I don't know why I put glue all the way to the edge when I knew I was going to cut that off. Just trimmed off that edge. I'll lay it up here with the glue up so it'll dry. <laughs> okay. But I'm thinking I could do another solid panel. So let's see. Ooh, that would be kind of pretty wouldn't it? All right, so I'm going to trim this one. You're kind of seeing the, the, the whole raw process, you know, I'm going to speed up, of course, where I'm not talking, but you can really see how I just start grabbing pages and just putting them down. I am trying to keep a color mix in a sense, but I'm really not trying to think too much about the patterns and placement. How about these two? I think that would be good. All right, so what I'm going to do first is trim off the excess on the edge that's rough. And then I'm going to decide how I want these. I think what I'll do is put this at the eight and a half, overlap it just slightly, and cut off the excess. All right, let's put the bigger piece at the bottom. All right, so it looks like so far I've spent about 24 minutes on the portion that I'm working on right now. So I'm just telling you that because you may want to know what it would take in real time to make one of these little small journal folios, I guess. There we go. I think I want to do another big piece over the cover. Oh, I have this one that has multiple different patterns. I think that'll be perfect for kind of coming around to the front. So again, I'm going to cut off this rough edge. Oh, I forgot. I want to make it shorter too. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is glue here and then we'll wrap the excess to the front.
We're getting there. A little at a time. <laughs> All right, then I'm going to flip this over and glue this piece. All right, so what I like to do after I've got one side on is at least go and fold where I want the folds to happen. So it just kind of gets in training. Okay, so I've got this pretty much folded back and forth the way that I want it, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you just kind of play with it as best you can. I had to stop for a moment. My dog started barking because they uh, wanted to be fed. All right, so I'm just going to continue on the other side. And I think I'll start over here. I think I want to put... I think I like this page here. Uh oh, what's going on with my blade? Sometimes my blade, I push too hard and I knock it loose in the housing, and so then it's not round and it won't cut. <laughs> so if you ever have one of these blades that does that, just pull it out, adjust it. I think I ordered some more somewhere. I know I put them in my shopping cart once. I probably haven't ordered them. All right, so I'm going to put that piece there. While I'm at, got the cutter out. I like this one, so I'm going to do the same thing to it. We haven't really used this one, so I'm going to use it. I'll use it with this piece. So I'm just going to cut these the same size. I think I'm going to do something like this just for something different. Yeah. How did I manage to do that? I was cutting another piece that we're gonna to use to fill in at the very end. So I think I've got all my pieces cut now. So I'll move some things over and then just work on gluing everything down. Just positioning them one after the other. I like this mix of different patterns next to each other. I think it's just a lot of fun, all the different colors. All right, so now this piece is going to go on the bottom, this piece on the top, because I want to kind of alternate big and small. All right, so then this piece is going to fit practically perfectly, but I think I may need to put a little something here. So I'm going to take a strip. Oh, I've got a real skinny strip here. I'm going to glue this real skinny strip right down here. I'll cut off the excess here in a little bit. And now I'll come back in here, and that should fill in that spot really well. All right. We'll glue this piece down. All right, so I'm going to take my scissors and trim off any white that I see. I'm having issues because I can't get my scissors out of there, so I'm going to get a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> and lay it along here and then just slice off all right so I cleared away most of those edges I'm going to clean off my desk a little bit here All right, so I want to fold this again. 
So I gotta figure out this was the inside here. So I'm gonna fold this over. So I'm just kind of manhandling it, as they say, uh, pushing it the way I want it to be. But here is my foundation. So we've got a cover, which will cover up stuff. We'll add more things to it. And then we've got an inside. And then this flips over. And we've got another page. And then we've got the last cover, the back cover, which looks like the front cover again. So it kind of starts over. It's kind of like a never-ending accordion book. And then you flip this over. And then you flip this over. And you're back to the cover again. All right. So here's what we're going to do. At the next live stream, I will continue embellishing this little folio piece so that you can follow along maybe even have for things prepared for next week if you have questions if you have suggestions of things you want to see put in this little folio use that description box down below and i will gladly take your comments and suggestions to consideration of what I do the Lex live stream. All right. Well, I am celebrating my birthday while I'm on a cruise. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today while I created the accordion folio. I think that's what we're going to call this is an accordion folio. It can kind of be a smaller journal. I'll even show ideas where I think next week we'll use some paint on the edges to kind of help cover those white edges and then we'll make pockets and other embellishments to go inside the journal if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends i greatly appreciate when you share my videos and share what i'm doing so that others can find me and by the way if you like something that somebody does on YouTube, share it. Leave them a comment. It helps get their boost their ratings up so more viewers watch them. And of course, then they can make more content because people are watching. I'll be back live 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time next Monday. And we'll continue on this journey. Thank you again so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.